All across the country, Democrats are facing primary challenges. And that's from you know Democrats you've probably never even heard of to some of the most notable in the country. We've profiled many of those challenges here on the Damage Report and we have an additional fairly notable one today. The challenger to Adam Schiff, no less. This is a Silver Lake Neighborhood Councilwoman and Congressional Candidate in the 20th District of California. Maybe a girl, welcome to the Damage Report. Hey, thank you so much for having me, I'm excited to be here. Uh, we're excited to have you here. Uh, as I alluded to in the intro, you are taking on Adam Schiff, who is one of the most known Democrats, particularly over the past few months with his involvement in the impeachment uh, debacle. Um, so tell me about the, the decision to run against such a well known and probably very well funded Democrat. <laughs> Yeah, if, uh, if not the most well-funded Democrat running uh, as an incumbent. Uh, so I, as, as you mentioned, I'm on the Silver Lake Neighborhood Council. And when I was elected, I became the first drag queen elected to public office in the United States, which actually came as a shock to me. I would have imagined that there were more drag queens already elected considering how much we are activists. Uh, but the reason I decided to run against Schiff is because I think a lot of people think of him as a progressive uh, because of his involvement with the impeachment. When in reality, he's very much a middle of the road Democrat. He's a moderate, he's a centrist. And here in District 28 in California, which includes West Hollywood, Hollywood, Silver Lake, Echo Park, this is one of the most progressive parts of, of the nation. And I think that we need progressive representation and not moderate present representation. So that, that's very interesting that there's like there, there's the idea of Adam Schiff. He was involved in trying to impeach Donald Trump. He shows up on Bill Maher. And then there's his actual voting record, which is not necessarily a firebrand progressive, obviously. So when you're out there in your campaign, you're talking to potential constituents, which Adam Schiff do they support? You know, it's interesting. Or do they believe exists, I should say? Exactly. Going out and talking to the voters, you know, a lot of people have expressed shock that I would even dare to run up against Adam Schiff. But what a lot of people don't realize about Adam Schiff is he's voted for a lot of policies that progressives are adamantly against. He voted just last uh, July to increase funding for ICE by more than $200 million, which I think is despicable in a district that is more than 25% Latinx. Uh, most people don't realize how much of a war supporter he is. Uh, he supported the Iraq war in 2004. Uh, he supported the Saudi invasion of Yemen. He supported keeping troops in Afghanistan. And literally every military increase that has crossed his desk, he has voted to increase our military spending, which uh, I've always said this, if we can spend nearly a trillion dollars a year on the military, we can spend thing, spend money on things like Medicare for all, for the Green New Deal, for a tuition free college, and a lot of the things that we actually need here in this country. Uh, well, you don't have to convince me on those priorities. Um, so you, you had a Twitter thread, thread recently where you called out a number of the different industries that he's received uh, money from. Um, what, what is your philosophy on fundraising? Uh, which, which sort of money are you pushing for and will accept and which are you uh, rejecting? So we are running a completely grassroots funded campaign. We are only accepting small personal donations from the people. I don't want to take any money that is involved in any sort of dirty industry. And you know, you have to ask yourself, is somebody that is accepting campaign donations from weapons makers and the defense industry going to keep us out of war with Iran? Do you think that somebody who accepts campaign donations from the real estate industry is going to try to help homelessness? Do you think that somebody that takes campaign donations from insurance companies and pharmaceutical companies is going to be in support of something like Medicare for all? So really, you have to think about what your politicians are saying and look at where their money is coming from and really try to figure out on your own where their loyalty where their loyalty is. Is it with the people or is it with the corporations that are funding their campaigns? Yeah. Let's uh, let's jump into your platform. Uh, in your campaign materials, you have three key tenets: protect, advocate, uh, and legislate. Can you tell us? Uh, Walk yeah, those. you know, I think in politics, uh, marginalized communities have been left out of the conversation for far too long. So the element of protect really means to protect marginalized communities, to protect women, to protect the LGBTQIA community, to protect immigrants, to protect minorities, to protect the environment. And you know, those are things that are so important and they're hot topics right now. But Again, how can we trust that our politicians are really looking out for us when we don't have representation and when, again, when they're taking campaign donations that are, you know, what we would consider dirty money? 
So look, we've talked quite a bit about who's been supporting Adam Schiff. You got you got the support of a, of a pretty important organization, the DSA LA. Tell us about that. I was so excited to get that endorsement because you know I, I'm the only progressive Democrat running on the ballot. Uh, there are seven challengers running up against Adam Schiff, and so to get that endorsement really meant a lot to me because it shows that. I'm the pro- the progressive choice in this district. Um, I was excited to get that. I've also been endorsed by our Revolution Los Angeles, and you know these are the organizations that I want to have the endorsement from. So uh, that was pretty exciting to get that. Yeah, and uh, look, I want to bring it back to one of the the things that you mentioned early in this interview. You said that you were the the, the first ever drag queen elected to. An office. Um, tell me about the decision to run in drag. First of all, was it actually a decision? And um, well, what were some of the considerations that you made? Yeah, absolutely. You know, first of all, the reason that I decided to run like this, uh, it's there's a couple of different reasons. So I am a drag queen, but I'm also a trans person. And so for me to go out like this, it's a very visual representation of the queer community. I you know, I think being queer is one of those things that you can hide if you want to. And I want to show that queer people are here. We're not going anywhere, and we are about to have a huge voice in our government. Uh, that's awesome. Um, where can people find out more about your platform? Uh, you can visit my website, which is maybeagirlforcongress.org. You can also follow me on Instagram at maybeagirl or on Twitter, maybe underscore a underscore girl. Uh, maybe a girl, congressional candidate in the 20th District of California. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks a lot. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.